Hello, my name is Prue, or Prue LaRue, and welcome to my channel. Today I decided to do something really different from my channel. Uh, my channel is very makeup focused, but another thing that I am probably more confident in my knowledge of is nursing. And I was just looking up tag videos to look up, and I thought, hey, how about a nursing tag video? And I found one, and today I'm going to answer some of those questions. Even if you don't like nursing this could still be interesting for you because i'll go through some of my nursing background history so i hope you stick around i hope you enjoy let me know if you would like maybe some more nursing content and this is a tag that was created by nurse steven i'll link him down below it looks like it's three years old so why not revive it and i believe give me lip and more you're a nurse as well i tag you and yeah I mean, if you want to do it, do it. Who cares if you're a nurse or not? I'm sure you could still have some interesting answers. The first is advice for nursing students. Um, so I've actually worked as a clinical facilitator, which is someone who assists the nursing students on their placement. And one of the biggest things I found was, you know, take some initiative in what you're doing. Ask questions before you do things if you're unsure about them. And... When it comes to worrying about getting a graduate program, just like take a chill pill, it's okay. Things will work their way out the way they're meant to be. And the market for nurses at the moment is really poor in Australia. You focus on getting the best grades you can and that's the best that you can do. And doing some practice for interviews if you are in that final stage. Yeah, practicing for interviews, I think is something that's really important to anyone who's coming out of university, especially if you haven't had a job prior to university or college and yeah just practicing interview questions practicing them with your friends family anyone who will do them with you and that's one of the biggest things I find a lot of nursing students actually do struggle with is being prepared for interviews uh, which we do do in Queensland but not all over Australia for the graduate programs some are purely online and yeah it's just one of those things my favorite nursing students so I went and grabbed them how attractive are they? These are non-slip shoes from Athlete's Foot. And in Australia, you can only put them on your tax claim if they are non-slip shoes. I like a black sneaker. Is pretty much my shoe preference. I walk a lot. Some days I can do up to 15,000 steps in at work. So having really comfortable shoes is really important to me. If Florence Nightingale time traveled to today, what do you think she would say? I think she'd be impressed. Um, she, Florence Nightingale, for anyone who doesn't know, is a pioneer in nursing and she's one of the ones who first started improving our infection control. I know in particular she's famous for, I think being in an army setting and sand was coming inside the, from the tent. And so she would turn the pillows opening away from the door and sand wouldn't get in there. So I think she would be impressed and I think maybe well, I'd be curious to see what she thinks of how much sicker people are these days, because people are definitely a lot sicker. Overall, she would be impressed with where nursing has gone, from where she first started it. How many hours can you go between restroom breaks? A very, very long time if I'm at work. If I'm at home, I'm like, toilet, I'm going, toilet, I'm going. If I'm at work, I can go five to six hours easily uh, without really thinking about it. It's not really, it's not something you really think about at work for me unless like I'm busting <laughs> then you're like I need to stop and go but if you're in the middle of something that's required a lot of adrenaline usually it's the last thing in your brain favorite nursing department I've been in the healthcare field since I was 18 I'm 29 now so it's fair, like a fairly decent time so what was that 11 years I've been in the healthcare for 11 years and I've been a registered nurse for seven eight years now before I answer what are my favorite areas, I'll tell you my history. So when I was in a nursing, when I was a nursing student, I used to work as a aged care worker. So showering and then showering older people and assisting them with their meals in a nursing home. That was definitely a really rewarding job and I definitely learned a lot from it. Post that I used to work, I also used to work in a pediatric surgical, no, pediatric surgical unit. Um, helping kids after their surgeries as a student nurse and that was also really eye-opening and interesting. I also and then when I became a registered nurse I've worked in a, 
cardiac care unit, I've worked in stroke, I have worked in ED, I have worked in cardiology as cardiac surgical nurse, coronary care, and not done any theatre. I also once worked for uh, like a healthcare insurance company and went around to workplaces doing health checks on employees. It was really, it was a weird one. And then um, after a couple of years sort of floating around doing that sort of work, I finally got into intensive care, which is what I currently do. And I've been doing that since 2013. So nearly five years. So I have my grad cert in intensive care nursing, and that's definitely just my favorite place to work. I've worked in cardiothoracic ICU, and I've worked in Townsville ICU, and I currently work in an ICU in Brisbane, which I'm just, I'm going to be vague on that because I currently work there. And like I said, I've also been a clinical nurse facilitator for nursing students. So I've done a lot of nursing stuff. Uh, but my favorite area to work is definitely intensive care. It's really rewarding to help people get better from the sickest that they can be. And it's also extremely challenging. You spend a lot of time on your feet. You spend a lot of time thinking and it is hard work. Uh, so the next question is write two care plans or take one nursing test. I'm not a nursing student, uh, but like maybe write two care plans. In uh, Queensland, it's just like ticking things in a box of if you've done something or not that day for a care plan. What size sterile gloves? Um, where I work, we have medium and large. So I just grab mediums and I think usually six and a half, maybe which is medium. Most people are medium sized gloved unless you have tiny hands and you're small. And usually men run in the large to extra large. I will just grab whatever glove is available. I'm like, if they've run out, you just make it work. And can you name the colors of the IV needle sizes? No, um, I work in intensive care and we just regularly don't cannulate people, which is where you stick a needle in someone's arm so that you can connect a drip or something like that. It's definitely more of an ED nurse skill. The doctors will ask me for a size needle when they need it and I think, yeah, I usually just read the packet and see and sometimes they know that we don't know so they just ask for the colour. Uh, eat lunch out of a bedpan or drink a soda out of a bedside urinal. Look, they're both gross. You couldn't even pay me to do this. No. I mean, like, maybe if you're gonna do it, it's like, drink so I've just, I've not seen any that look that clean. Like, they're semi-clean. <laughs> the bedside urinals, they get all white plasticky and then they change colour. That's really gross. Um, and bedpans. Like, where we are, our cleaner just doesn't do a good job at cleaning them. I have worked places that had cardboard once. So if it's cardboard and no one's used it, yeah, I'm kidding. But yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Oh, what age did you enter nursing school? North nursing school. I was 18. What do you do to a boggy fundus? So I'm fairly certain that this is a pregnancy thing. Let me just Google it to confirm. Boggy fundus. Yeah, it's like a postpartum pregnancy thing of bleeding. Look, I don't look after pregnant people. That's um, in Australia, midwives do that as the regular. And if you're an ED nurse, you might see it, but I don't. Um, and for me, it's impressive that I know what a fundus is, but I'm pretty sure it's a post-pregnancy thing. Yeah, but it is a postpartum pregnancy thing that can occur. How long can you do CPR? So it's been a long time since I've done actual CPR in a person. We train every year and we have like a machine that counts like our depths and our strengths and how quick we're going and it tells us if we're going too quick. I think I can hold up for like three minutes and like the idea is that you do one like two minute round and then tap out. Oh no, actually, no, I can do, uh, yeah, I, I can do it effectively for a while. Um, I think I can do like at least five to 10 minutes. When you're in that scenario, you just do it. And if you are getting too sore and you're not getting effective pumps, someone will just tap you out and it's fine. You just time it with, you just time it up and you tap out. 
mouth to mouth. Um, I mean, no. <laughs> mouth to mouth uh, CPR. So it is actually no longer an encouraged practice to do mouth to mouth on people that you see on the street and compressions can have been seen to be just as effective. A lot of shopping markets, shopping, a lot of shopping malls now have defibrillators on the walls, which if you go and see them in the store, they're this big, they usually say defibrillator or AED and it's red in a container hung up on the wall. If you see someone who's collapsed, the best thing you can do is stick, like stick them on their bare skin and turn it on. It will talk you through everything and commence compressions and call like triple zero or 911 if you're a US and just, you know, talk it through. But mouth to mouth is no longer something that is highly recommended solely because it's better to get compressions. And where I work, um, I use, you know, we, we've got, we've got the mask, we've got the full fancy gig that does it for us all. Day shift or night shift. Look, I, I like them both for different reasons. Day shift is good because you're up during the daytime and you don't mess up your entire sleep schedule, but they can be very busy. Night shift, you tend to be a lot more, hmm, what's the best way to describe it? Night shift can be a bit more relaxed if your patient's awake because you're encouraging them to sleep, but it can be just as busy as daytime. It's really just hard to know. And yeah, let me know if you would like any more nursing content. I can easily do that. I've just got to think of more stuff like that. But I thought I'd just do something a little bit different on my channel that maybe ties into a bit of a getting to know me style. If you're interested in doing this tag, I absolutely tag you. And thank you so much for dropping by. Mm. Uh -huh.